a new version of Freeman is now upon us thanks to the developers' efforts. And, well, it's a fantastic one. I mean, that's generally what I always say when there's a new update to the game because every single time the developers either outdo themselves or they change something so dramatically that you're just like, what, this is an entirely new game. And in this case, I feel like they have just added so many cool things. So first off, let's go over to the party screen here and uh, you can, <laughs> uh, yes, if your eyes are being drawn over here, then you'll see that uh, I have actually just renamed my Kalahari uh, squad to Calamari. I know that Calamari is spelt with a C usually, that's why I put in the brackets, it's a joke because people apparently don't get the whole Mojave Mojave thing anyway. Point is, this is going to be really cool because here is an auto equip button. Also an auto group up button as well. Now I'm not entirely sure what the auto group up button actually does just yet. Ah, I see. It actually adds people. It adds unassigned units to the current squad. In my opinion, that's absolutely fantastic because that basically just means that you never have to worry about unassigned units ever again. You can basically just you know, click on auto group up and then auto equip and then whatever is in your inventory will be equipped on your soldiers. And that's exactly what I've done here. So I've basically done auto equip with every single one of my squads and it appears as though everyone's using exactly what they need to use to be as efficient as possible. Now, otherwise, my inventory here, I obviously do not have the mod installed. I don't have the mod installed anymore because obviously with a new patch, of Freeman, I kind of want to just go with the base game because obviously the developers are still making, you know, different uh, different choices here and there, balancing the game in significant ways, and I want to try and uh, see what those are, and that's exactly what we're doing here. So, one of the things that I should obviously mention is the fact that I will no longer be able to use my Scar because it is Marksmanship 7. However, if I am going to spec into Marksmanship with this new level that I've just gained here, then obviously that's really nice and I'll be able to use the Scar again. So maybe I'll do it, but I think I'm just going to use the AKM for the moment because it does have more damage. It has less muzzle velocity, obviously, which is a big issue. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's, let's use the Scar. Why not? Why not? I mean, I have enough ammo for it anyway, so we might as well do something like that. There we go. That seems pr pretty cool. Now, I have actually equipped the 4X scope onto the scar because I've I've obviously thought hey you know what it's probably going to be a, a pretty decent idea to go with that so yeah otherwise as you can see they've actually added camouflage I'm not entirely sure how fleshed out the camouflage system is but they have added camouflage onto the clothes as well as your uh, body armor uh, to to obviously help in various environments now I I'm not entirely sure I agree about this. I think it's really cool to have that in-depth kind of way of doing things because obviously if you think about it, you know, if you're planning on being in jungle environment or you're planning on being in a desert environment or what do we have here, snow or night. Ooh, night camouflage would be really cool in my opinion because if we fight at night and we got our night vision goggles, that's going to be really, really fun. Anyway, I'm going to increase my assault rifle accuracy even further right here. I think I have enough armor now to obviously make a pretty big difference. Ah, Spetsnaz helmets have actually been reduced in armor proficiency as well. They are now 40 and we'll see if we can maybe do something about that, maybe get a little bit of a better piece of armor. Anyway, the uh, Uman terrorists, we obviously eliminated their last town in the previous episode, and they have been eliminated completely from the game. So we don't need to worry about them any further, and I don't believe we're actually at war against anyone else with the exception of... Um, well, obviously the regular bandits and things like that. I have placed 13 units in Berezno. I've placed militia riflemen and militia SMG fighters. So they're, they're, they're fine, you know. I actually recruited those from the barracks for actually pretty cheap prices. Pretty cheap prices. So that's, that's quite nice. Otherwise, we have Drobin here. And um, there's actually something really cool that you can now do. And I believe... Mm, let me see if I can do that actually. Uh, I think if you go to companion here, you can actually tell them to become a mayor. 
we can tell them to become a mayor of a particular town and that's exactly what the city management uh, skill is actually for obviously I'm probably not gonna do this with either of these guys because they are well I mean they're suited for for combat now but any new companion I might decide to spec them into city management and that could be pretty fun not entirely sure how that's actually gonna work maybe you put them in there or maybe you go to the armory or something there's armory storage and there's regular storage and then we obviously have the prison here as well. I have Militia Sniper and a Terrorist there. And then obviously we have buildings too. So this is also very, very cool. They've done a much better job of actually telling you exactly what everything is. So you no longer have to mouse over any of these buildings. You can literally just go and you can be like, Oh, okay, I need, I, I'd like to get some Spetsnaz. I need iron. And look, they've changed the costs of these things. They've actually made it so that all of these things are going to cost basically just one or two iron, maybe even, maybe four, dependent on which, uh, you know, wh wh on which things you're going to get. Because as you can see right here, this upgrades the rank of your soldiers. And this is obviously a very powerful building. So that's exactly the reason why it's going to take a little bit longer and be a bit more expensive to construct. Same thing with the lumber mill and the iron factory and things like that. They're going to be pretty expensive. So we're going to go over to Gorinka because obviously Gorinka is my main main thing. And uh, we're going to see if I can maybe do something to... Well, let's have a look at the storage. Oh, I actually don't have a very big storage whatsoever. I'm actually kind of surprised about this. Ah, here we go. Okay, so there seems to be a bit of a bug because obviously this is my current save game and I have not started a new game. So there might be a bug in compatibility at the moment, which is a bit of a shame, but I think I have enough space for four iron, which I think is pretty good. So I will be able to build something else. So let's have a look, see here. So technically what I could do is I could build a Spetsnaz training center, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build one of those, and then I'm gonna go into my storage once again, get some more iron out. I only need four. Remember that, I only need four, so let's go to the gar gar uh, garrison. Let's go to the buildings again, and I'm actually going to go and get the Senior Soldier Cadet Academy. And that is going to upgrade the ranks of our soldiers so incredibly heavily. I think that's going to be really, really nice. I technically could get a whole bunch of other stuff. I could get a warehouse. I think it might be an idea to just get the warehouse anyway. Mm, armor. Ooh, steel helmets steel helmets we could actually make that's pretty cool mm. well there's a whole bunch of things that you can actually get and uh, well I have a lot of a lot of extra iron here as well so I think what I'm gonna do is I don't have enough iron to be able to build an iron factory at our other town just yet so I think I'm just gonna concentrate on getting some bigger things going on here so we're gonna get this Cadet Academy and uh, we'll see what what's going on with that. That's going to be really, really cool. You can also see there's a whole bunch of other automated things here as well. Like, for example, automated tax. That basically means that it collects tax instantly without you having to do anything as soon as it pops up. And that means that obviously 30% commission is going to be deducted from your overall, you know, overall cash but if you're out there somewhere far away from your towns it's going to be a really good way to do things you can also automatically sell warehouse items and you can also automatically sell warehouse weapons which is fantastic i think that's a really really cool way of doing things because if you want to create a city that is all about making money you can do that because let's say that i just want to make a city that is completely all about making the most expensive weapons or the most expensive whatever it may be and then I just I just tick that and then it basically just goes okay I'm gonna sell all of this for you and then you're gonna make even more cash which is just crazy so what we're gonna do is uh, yeah there we go the Spetsnaz training center is now done Berezno is under attack so I will be heading over there and hopefully Yevgen is in the in the area as well oh yes by the way they have added something rather fiendish you know what it is? It's grouping. Yes, it's grouping. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically, that means if there are two enemy groups next to each other, they will help each other out. Because beforehand, you could just go in against a singular enemy, and then you would only have that one enemy group to deal with. But nowadays, oh, it's, it's very different. 
It's very different. They, you know, if you if you attack a, a a party of thirty or something like that, and they have someone that is having a party of sixty right next to them, that will now all happen together. So they'll all all group up against you, which would be which is going to be pretty harsh. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually looking forward to seeing what's going on with that. So we're just, we're just going to put all our people in here. This these guys are not going to stand a chance. They really aren't. I mean, my forces, while they may be slightly less powerful because the AKM 74s, which we were previously uh, utilizing, they are now marksmanship nine. So obviously some of my guys are capable of using them and some are obviously not. So there's that, but I don't really mind to be honest. And they've also cleaned up a little bit of UI real estate down in the bottom right there. As you can see, they've actually changed where the ammunition is and uh, all that wonderful stuff. So that's pretty cool in itself. Now I'm gonna definitely need to get an upgrade in terms of my helmet, because obviously beforehand Spetsnaz helmets were 60 and now they are 40. I'm not entirely sure if that was the mod changing things, but obviously we're playing the base game right now. So that might very well be a bit of a difference, but uh, I'm gonna be very much looking forward to using my new scope with an actual weapon that I can do well with, or kind of do well with at least, maybe. We'll see. But uh, we should probably try and prevent our flag from being taken up there. But who knows whether they're actually going to do that. Oh, hello. We got some We got some people shooting at us. Oh, you see that? You see them right there? I see them. Oh, headshot. Wow, that was a nice headshot right there. We did 239 damage. So it seems like they have actually implemented a way to see how much damage you actually deal as well, if you actually get a headshot, perhaps. Not entirely sure if you will see the damage of normal hits just yet, but that could be pretty fun anyway. Oh, no, you don't, you don't see damage of normal hits, but as you can see, I am almost shooting a laser right now. My scar is very much my weapon of choice by the looks of things right now because as you can see even though I am still missing most of the time I have gotten so many more kills than I would have otherwise gotten and there you go wow another 239 damage right there that is really really cool okay so otherwise we're just going to tell our people just to go straight up here and we'll see what we can do but thankfully we've eliminated the terrorists so we no longer have to worry about those guys at all and we can actually just focus on securing our towns and doing battle with a couple of mountain bandits as you can quite clearly see here and let's try and eliminate these guys oh it is like a laser now it is like a laser i don't even have to compensate for bullet drop right now because it is just so laserific and that is indeed a word no it isn't so yeah that is pretty crazy if i could actually hit with this now is that, is that guy dead? That guy's dead, I think. Yeah, that guy's definitely dead. But you, as you can see, we're hitting things like no one's business. I think they may have also done some refinements to the actual combat as well. Because this is basically a combat update. And they've made things very, very cool in my opinion. Because it basically makes it so that you encounter more low-level enemies. And the lower-level enemies are slightly easier. And there's also a difficulty slider now. So the difficulty goes, as far as I am aware, from very easy all the way through to easy to normal to hard. And then I assume very hard is going to be the, the highest level of difficulty. I am playing on normal at the moment, I think. I think I'm playing on normal at the moment. I'm going to have to check that after this. And uh, yeah, so if you want a harder challenge or an easier challenge either way, then you know what to do. Well, there it is. There's the victory for us. Unfortunately, we actually ended up losing two Spetsnaz units. Can you believe that? I'm actually really surprised about it. But anyway, there's only 225 experience, 5,000 credits, because obviously we're dealing with some pretty low tier enemies right there. And uh, yeah, I'm actually really, really pleased to see Camouflage returning to the game as well, because personally, I really loved the whole camouflage thing. I think it's a really, really cool mechanic and I would love to be able to see an advancement in that 
as we go forward in development. And they have said that they are going to continue working on these kinds of things, continue implementing, you know, new mechanics and um, obviously making things much, much better overall. You know, quality of life, uh, improvements, as well as new new things altogether, you know, so they've obviously started to introduce the camouflage. Don't know whether it works just yet, as I've said, but it would be really cool if it actually ends up working at some point. And I'm actually going to be in, I'm actually going to be wearing this. Can I, can I actually, can I not wear that? Is that on the head? Ah, that's on the head. Okay, so I won't be, I won't be using that just yet. I was actually thinking it might be instead of the gas mask, but it's not. So that's, uh, well, it's a bit of unfortunateness. <laughs> unfortunateness, yes, exactly. Uh, oh well, never mind. Okay, so I'm actually going to be specking into Instructor once again because that's going to increase our combat experience. And then we can go over to our party. Did anyone level up? It's a highly unlike. Oh, these guys leveled up. Okay, so let's get those leveled up. There we go. And we can also obviously get these guys, this uh, machine gunner, into the Atacama squad because obviously he is, uh, well, he's by himself and we need to fill up some space. So why not? Let's auto-equip him as well. As you can see, he gets auto-equipped with a vest almost immediately, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, that means that there's no more micromanaging. And I, I love that. I love that so much because I'm not a big fan of micromanaging things. Oh, why is this under siege? Are you sure this is under siege still? I don't think it is. No, it's not. There we go. All right. So let's collect some taxes as well here and... Uh, I think we should... Ooh, there's luxury wine and all kinds of things. Hey, you know what? Isn't there another companion in here? I think there is another companion in here, so... Ah, seems like she's gone. Seems like she's gone. Oh, okay. So, oh, well, that's that's kind of unfortunate. I was, I was hopeful that we might be able to, in this episode, actually persuade her to join us. But no such luck. No such luck. But, uh, you know, it's not it's not a big deal, I suppose. Not a big deal. All right, so I guess we'll just sell the luxury wine. And we're going to sell a whole bunch of other stuff here as well. Because no one in my party actually needs any of this stuff. And I will be, as I say, making sure that we press auto-equip every so often. And that is going to give the very best stuff to, the, uh, to our forces. And I'm actually going to need to take all of this back. Because I have... Uh, oh. I actually bought something by mistake. Great. Yes. Uh, huh. I'm not entirely sure how to get out of this. I, I guess I'll just pay 2000 just, just to get out of here. Yeah, just to get out of here. Okay, so there's, there's, there's a much better way of selling it. So I guess we'll just sell all of this ammo as well because I am using a scar now too. And... We will sell all this stuff. Wow. Look at, look at how expensive all this stuff is. It's really, really good how everything is balanced. I think that's really cool. And shall we automatically sell warehouse items? Because I actually am unsure what kind of buildings we have here. I think we can actually check on the right side. So yeah, we can check here. So what do we have? We got a, well, we got a garrison camp. That increases garrison, you know, size. Oh, there's an iron factory. Ooh, that's really, really cool. Okay, so it seems like there isn't actually anything else here. So I guess we'll just take some fish and we will sell all of the warehouse items. I'm actually unsure. Are they going to... Did they sell them already? No, they didn't. Right. Okay. Well, I guess I'm just going to wait here for some time and we'll see what happens. All right. So I have just told Igor that it is about time that he forms his own army. And when I've done this, obviously, that basically removes him from my party. As you can see, he actually has a maximum party size of 120. This guy's going to be an absolute monster if he actually gets his maximum amount that he can actually field. Now, if we actually want him to, he can be appointed mayor by selecting, I want to appoint you mayor, and then we can basically tell him to go wherever we, you know, wherever we want, basically. And that is going to be really, really cool for the companions that actually spec into city, city management, because what that will do is that basically may, means that the mayor will automate a whole bunch of functions. As detailed in the patch notes of this update, the mayor will automate garrisons, will automate fixing buildings, will automate even constructing buildings, and things like that. And I am very excited to see what they do, but unfortunately I do not have more than two companions. So obviously that is unfortunate. Uh, is there actually a companion in here? No, there, no. I think, I think I already got that person, or maybe I didn't. I'm not entirely sure, but it's okay. 
it's okay because we are doing pretty well right here i think ah there she is that's where she is ah okay i have a gift for you i've got some wine there you go and now she can actually now she can actually join us there we go there's a there's a long backstory with her if you want to check that out then i'd highly recommend getting the game because it's actually 20 percent off right now on steam if you'd like to do that then there's a link in the description otherwise let us ask her to join us yes please come with me yes there we go fantastic okay so now technically what we can do is we can ask her to form her own army but i think it's probably a good idea for her to stay with us for a little bit of time because i would like to see uh wow this wow this city is just absolutely crazy as you can see look at the happiness rating 97 percent. that is amazing that's really really cool okay so otherwise what we're going to do is i'm actually going to just tell this uh town to automatically sell all the warehouse all the warehouse wares and i think that's going to be pretty cool and let's actually just take a look at her stats here real quick okay so her stats in terms of combat very low and i would i would have expected that because she's probably going to be really good with city management she's good very very good with financial as you can see increases daily income of the npc army so yeah she's really good with financial she moves really fast on the world map as well and I think that if she can get a couple of levels, if she can get to like five, level five, maybe level six or something like that, she's going to be really, really good with city management too. So we might make her the mayor of one of our towns and then she's going to be insane. She's going to be really insane for increasing our construction speed and basically making it so much easier for us to deal with things. So we're going to actually place one of our, oh, the, yeah, not that guy. We're going to place her in here, I suppose, and we'll just auto equip her with... <laughs> uh it, yeah we're gonna need to get her some lower level gear in my opinion that's probably gonna be a, a good idea so let's get her something that she can actually use relatively efficiently maybe this smg uh maybe something like this uh i don't know what her armor proficiency is i think it's really low so we'll probably just get her a scout vest and we we do need to get her some actual armor so we could get her some other no uh, i think that's i think that's pretty good and then we'll just get her some regular marine colors and oh wow there's a lot of stuff here but uh blue 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 jeans no no we'll, we'll go for i can't find any actual camo pants which is uh well we could go old gray pants i don't really want to give her old gray pants to be honest i'd much rather give her something relatively stylish but we could go for yeah i guess just blue jeans why not i mean that there, there aren't oh, there, oh there, there's some combat pants oh okay fantastic fantastic okay yeah we'll, we'll just we'll just do that okay so that seems pretty good to me and then we can go over here and that the cool thing about it is that you can literally just go oh look at this auto equip boom and then she's just you know using all of the stuff that we just gave her, which is really, really nice in my opinion. And if you want to, you can obviously take off her other stuff too. We're probably going to do that because I'd like to get her something a little bit better. And let me just see here real quick. She has 16 armor proficiency, which is pretty low, but I think she can, she can definitely wear this military shirt. I'm not entirely sure why she didn't wear both of these things. So maybe there, it doesn't seem to equip this automatically, which is... A bit weird not entirely sure why why that happened but that's okay that's fine she's got some uh decent enough smg and pretty awful otherwise stuff but obviously she's not really a combat companion anyway i'm actually wondering what i should attack next because i don't really have any uh any way of uh really knowing what to do i, I suppose what we could do is attack a pirate base i mean we've done that before and gained a pretty decent amount of cash i'm actually wondering chinivka Ah, they have a couple. Hmm, that might actually be a good way to go. As you can see right here, Chinivka only has two towns from what I can see from here. They might have another one somewhere far away. If I actually go to my info screen right here, you can actually see which ones are which. Yeah, they actually only have two territories right here. And they actually have two hero units as well, which would be really cool for us to be able to maybe persuade to join us hmm 
And then obviously we have the Chinookan front raid here. They only have one hero. They have three territories. Then we, ah, oh, we, uh, look at that, the free, uh, the FCA. Ooh, do we want to deal with the FCA with their grenadiers? That's going to be pretty harsh. And then the Atov Federation have absolutely huge amounts of stuff, which is just crazy. I think they may have taken a couple of towns from, oh, wow, they're actually enemies with a whole bunch of people. So they're actually the enemies of most people here, which is kind of crazy. Okay. Ah, interesting. So it seems like the only people that are not actually at war with anyone are the VFA. So we might have to do something about that. There's actually even a power analysis right here, which is actually really cool in my opinion. So you can actually see what's what's going on. And there's us. <laughs> there's us. Yes, we're we're just a straight line. We're not. We're just kind of getting getting there. Anyway, I guess we'll just go and attack a pirate base, and we'll see what we can do. Because I think we're doing a lot better than we used to. And oh, look at this! I'm receiving credits, and a senior soldier. Yeah, the senior soldier cadet is complete. So the the cadet academy is now done, and we will now pay all of the salary. And I guess we will just send this guy in over here and we'll just auto equip him with a nice little helm there as well the auto equip system is fantastic we we gotta say that it is really fantastic so as you can see all these guys are going in and i am going to be attacking them so yeah look at this <laughs> look at how cool that is i think that's really amazing because before you'd actually only be able to attack that one group but now you can tackle all of them at the same time which is really cool all right so let's uh Let's try and deal with these guys the best we can. And we're going to clear the waypoints and all that sort of thing. Okay, so we're just going to go... Well, these are just pirates, right? So they're not actually terrorists or anything like that. And the terrorists were pretty hard in terms of having so many grenades at their disposal. But thankfully, we didn't lose too many to them so it's nothing really to worry about there and we uh they've actually fixed the memory leak as well if that if that is of concern to you they fix the memory leak when it comes to spawning soldiers in so it basically makes it super easy for you to load in now to the battlefield and you don't need to you know you don't have a, a longer a longer loading time which is really cool so otherwise i am going to be attempting to find these guys and oh they've actually added a timer system as well oh i like it I like it. That basically means that if you are engaged in a fight, let's say with 10 people, and there are reinforcements of another 10 and another 10 and another 10, you have a little bit of separation in that timing, which I think is super nice because that basically makes it so that you have a little bit of breathing space. You know, you have some breathing space and you can actually deal with the opponent in a slightly more cautious, patient manner rather than going crazy with, with so many different squads. And I think that's really, really cool. So we'll see if we're actually able to make good use of it. I'm not entirely sure whether to use night vision goggles on this map either, but I think it's all right. I can see an enemy over there. Shall we try shooting him? Oh, I hit him. I hit him from here. Can you believe it? Yeah, that's what proficiency does. It's crazy how much it really helps. Says he as he gets a headshot. Oh, very nice. Lovely. Ah, uh, yes. I feel like they have improved the combat system rather significantly because before I was, you know, I was hitting people, but I wasn't really hitting people as you might expect. But obviously because this is partial RPG, you do obviously get a bit more reliant on stats rather than you know, your your FPS skill or whatever. So that uh, that obviously has to be taken into account. I'm going to be a bit careful here as well. I am very far up though, so I'm thinking I'd like to get my, my snipers over here if at all possible. Let's move these guys over as well. Let's just go for a straight frontal attack for the most part because I think we probably have a significant advantage anyway, but obviously we have to be a bit cautious about enemies yeah you got to be careful as well because there is a time uh, for the bullet to actually travel so obviously when enemies are moving from left to right for example like that guy you just saw you do have to be a bit careful with you know allowing for the time of his actual movement and things like that so yeah anyway uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, my vantage point right here 
Oh, I hit that guy three times in a row and finished him with a headshot. Nice. Enemy squads are flinging. Whoa, the machine gunner. Wow, okay, this guy, I don't know whether he can actually see me or can't see me. Oh, no, he can't see me. Yes, he can see me. But thankfully, he saw me a bit late. And uh, I'm, I'm wondering whether that is due to my, uh, my limited amount of camouflage. And as I say, I'm not entirely convinced about the different types of camouflage at the moment, mainly because I don't know whether you're really going to know which environment or which biome you're really going to be in. Do you know what I mean? I think it's a really cool concept, but I don't know whether it's... I don't know, because then you have to change your armor all the time, and that might be a bit tedious for some people, but I don't know. I mean, I'm just giving my opinion, at least, on the... Uh, on the changes here because there are so many wonderful changes it's I, I just can't possibly you know touch upon them all so if you'd like to check out actually all of the changes then well there's a blog you know you can go to the blog on the uh, on the uh, product page and now you know you can actually see that so yeah that's uh, that's really really cool in my opinion and there's actually only only uh, a couple of enemies still remaining and I think that is gonna be it have we lost anyone no, we haven't lost anyone. That's great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell everyone just to go. Let's do this. Just tell everyone to go right up here. Just going to spread them out a little bit. There we go. Just to make sure that they don't get all shot or killed by one grenade. And we're going to move up as well. See if we can get a couple of extra kills. But I'm very much liking the fact that we have much more assault rifle proficiency now. That is making things so much easier. So anyway, I hope you have enjoyed the small overview of the new update. And I think I'm sure I've missed something because there's just so many changes, so many good changes. And I'm sure I've missed something, but hopefully I'll be able to touch upon it in the next episode as well. So I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.